Flight simulators are more popular than ever, and Microsoft's latest Flight Simulator 2020 was far and away their best entry in the series from a sales standpoint, with over 12 million unique players. Already, Flight Simulator 2024 is well underway, finally bringing with it multi-threading support and doubling down on enhanced cloud services. But to me, there's still something missing, Microsoft's Combat Flight Simulator. Those games were very popular in their time, but the most recent was released way back in 2002. In this video, we'll focus mostly on Combat Flight Simulator 2, since even today it stands apart from most of the competitors in this space. But first, as always, here's the background. Microsoft's Combat Flight Simulator burst onto the scene in 1998, just a month ahead of its chief rival, Jane's World War II Fighters. Fans of games from this era should be very familiar with the Jane's brand, as it was a powerful force to be reckoned with in the 90s. However, Microsoft's greater overall brand awareness in the wider marketplace and its one month head start meant that it could pull in a lot of customers and this led to many gamers adopting the Microsoft title as their air combat game of choice, leading to very poor sales and a major loss for the EA-backed Jane's brand. Combat Flight Simulator's other main competitor, Microprose's European Air War, was released in between Combat Flight Simulator and Jane's Fighters. The campaigns in CFS were composed of missions you moved through one after the other, you could progress whether you won or lost your mission, with the outcome only changing your overall score. However, European Air War included a campaign that was much more dynamic, in which the events and timetables of the war would change depending on your mission performance. More like what Combat Flight Simulator 3 would eventually do. While I never played either of these earlier games as a kid, I definitely think the Microprose game sounds a lot more interesting with the greater dynamics in the campaign. I already loved their B-17 Flying Fortress game from that era, Hopefully I can do a video on that one of these days. For now, let's move on into Combat Flight Simulator 2, which was definitely one of my all-time favorites growing up. Comment below if you've played this game or one of its competitors, and what your go-to Combat Flight Sim is. The development process for CFS2 Pacific Theater had to tackle several technical hurdles to make a game like this even possible on systems of the time, with the level of detail desired. For example, the amount of water, jungle terrain on islands, and drawing of coastlines necessary to depict the Pacific War were all resource-hungry operations. Improvements had to be made on how the engine processed these items compared to the original game. Even so, it took a pretty high-end machine for the year 2000 to be able to run this game smoothly on decent settings. They also made some minor campaign improvements. What I really want to focus on, though, is my favorite part of the development story, the inclusion of real World War II pilots into the development process. In addition to American Joe Foss, Microsoft interviewed Japanese fighter ace Saburo Sakai to ensure as much accuracy as possible and that the Japanese side was not just a caricature of the enemy. Many of the things he mentions in his interview with Microsoft made it into the game, such as how AI-controlled Zeros will love to try and get you into low, slow turning fights. The quick combat mode also has settings for advantaged, disadvantaged, and neutral positions, and some of the Japanese missions resemble those of his own career, though there are some elements that he mentioned which did not make it into the game, chiefly the lack of operational radios in many, if not most, Zero fighters early in the war. Additionally, team tactics are critical to winning battles on the higher difficulty and realism settings, so the team tactics are part of the Japanese campaign just as much as the American one, despite being a lesser focus to actual the Japanese pilots in World War II, and more something that Joe Foss would have talked about. While CFS2's campaign has some limited variability, it is still much more like CFS1 than the open-ended Combat Flight Simulator 3, which was released only two years later. The single missions and quick combat allow for easy and approachable ways to learn the game outside of the campaign. You can adjust individual realism settings as well, gradually transitioning from the arcade experience into a more realistic one, something very much lacking in other modern combat simulators like IL-2 or War Thunder, which have either arcade or realism mode, and nothing really in between. Even the graphics look okay if you remember to boost all the settings and set the resolution to a modern one. The planes do, anyway. The terrain is still pretty bad. But hey, it's pre-cloud technology and it all fits on less than 987 megabytes of space. So with that in mind, it's impressive. The reviews for this game were off the charts when it first released. IGN, Eurogamer, GameSpot, and others all marveled at the level of details in the plane models. The IGN reviewer noted that the textures were four times more detailed than that of its predecessor and seemed genuinely amazed at carrier landings being possible, as if earlier games like EA's Pacific Strike and Microprose's Pacific Air War hadn't already done that. 
Reviewers across the board praised the meticulous research and dedication to realism, which was also the chief complaint, that the hardcore sim player was the core audience that this game was made for, and therefore it was less approachable somehow to the general public. I disagree, since this game has many variable difficulty and realism settings that allowed me to pick it up and master it as a 10 year old. Especially looking at how it compares to hardcore sims of today, it's a very approachable game if you adjust the settings and up the difficulty as you learn. Believe it or not, Combat Flight Simulator 2 The Pacific Theater is still playable today, as is Combat Flight Simulator 3 which covers the European Air War and has the dynamic campaign. I'll post a detailed set of instructions in the description of how to play these games, as they are currently abandoned wear and can be downloaded in easy to install ISOs. Trust me, I suck at making ISOs and almost never even bother to try, but I got these to work in under an hour, so if I can, you probably can too. If you like this video, check out some of our other Blast from the Past content and subscribe for updates. Thank you for watching!